In this Blender video, I'll be showing you how to add backlighting to an object to give it a rim light effect. This can help an object to really stand out against the backdrop. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.79b. During the video, I'll be adding backlighting to two different projects. So let's get started with the first project, which is a can with water droplets on it. Looking at it from the top, the camera is located here. The scene has a point lamp positioned here that's used as a key light. This is the main light source. It also has another point lamp positioned here that's used as a fill light. The fill light will soften the shadows created by the key light. Here is the current scene rendered using the Cycles Render Engine. When I add the backlighting, the can will be brighter around the outside edges. This will result in a nice contrast between the can and the backdrop. To make the contrast even stronger, I'm going to select the backdrop and change it to a dark color. The backdrop is currently set to white, so I'll change it to a hex value of 202020. This will result in a dark gray color. In the world panel, the background color is set to a gray color. I'm going to change it to black so that none of the scene lighting will come from the background. This is what the rendered image looks like now. Next, I'll add a backlight. To do that, I'll select one of the point lamps, press Shift D to duplicate, and drag the duplicate lamp behind the can. The camera, the can, and the lamp should all be aligned. Now I'll change the name of the lamp to lamp dot backlight. Next I'm going to change the backlight from a point lamp to a spot lamp. When using a spot lamp, it's necessary to point the lamp in the direction that you want it to shine. To make this easier, I'm going to add a constraint to the lamp so that it will always point at the center of the can. To do this, I'll start by adding an empty object that will be located at the center of the can. So I'll press Shift A and select Empty, and then Plane Axis. Then I'll press 1 on the number pad for front view. Now I'll drag the empty to the center of the can. Then I'll press 3 on the number pad for right side view and drag it to the center of the can. To add the constraint, select the spot lamp and then switch to the Object Constraints panel. Then add a Track To constraint. For the target, select the empty object that was just added. Then click the minus Z axis because this is the lamp axis that we want to point at the can. Then change the up value to Y. Now you can see the cone of the lamp pointing at the center of the can. If I move the lamp, it will stay pointed at the can. Now I'll switch back to the object data panel so that I can make some changes to the lamp. As a starting point, I'll set the strength to 10,000. The cone size is currently set to 75 degrees. You can see the cone here. I'm going to reduce the cone size to 45 degrees. Now we'll set up the size and position of the lamp. To do this, I'll press 0 on the number pad for camera view, and then I'll switch to rendered view. Something that really helps when you're setting up backlighting is to temporarily turn off all of the light sources except the backlight. So I'll find the other two light sources in the outliner and click the buttons that look like eyes to hide them. Now it's a lot easier to see how the backlight is contributing to the scene. With this view, you can see that there is nice contrast on the top of the can, but there is very little light on the sides. So to increase the amount of light on the sides, I'm going to increase the size of the lamp to 7. This looks better, but I'm going to increase the size of the lamp even more, so I'll set it to 10. I like this better. Currently, the water droplets on the sides are nicely lit, but the sides of the can itself are not. So I'm going to move the lamp down on the z-axis. To do that, I'll press G to move, and then press Z to restrict the movement to the z-axis. 
Now we have some light on the sides of the can near the top. Now I'll go to the outliner and turn the front lamps back on. The last thing to do is to set the strength of the backlight. I'd like for it to be brighter, so I'm going to increase the strength to 20,000. This looks good. This is what the rendered image looks like now. Here's a comparison of the scene that we started with that had a light backdrop and no backlighting, and the scene that we have now. The extra lighting around the outside edge produces a nice contrast against the dark backdrop. Now let's set up the backlighting for this microphone object. In case you're interested in making this microphone yourself, I put a link to a tutorial in the video description. The backdrop near the top of the microphone is not very bright, so adding some rim light to the microphone will help it to stand out against the background. Looking at it from the top, the camera is located here. There are two lamps in front of the microphone and one behind it. I'm going to use this lamp for the backlight. So I'll select it, press G to move, and then move it directly behind the microphone as viewed from the camera. I'm also going to rename it Lamp dot backlight. Next I'm going to change the backlight from a point lamp to a spot lamp. And just like I did earlier, I'm going to add an empty object to give the spot lamp a target to point at. So I'll press Shift A and select Empty and then Plane Axis. Now I need to center it over the microphone so I'll drag it down. Then I'll press 1 on the number pad for front view and center it over the microphone again. Now I'll add a Track 2 constraint to the lamp. So I'll select the lamp and then open the Constraints panel and add a Track 2 constraint. For the target, I'll select the empty object. Then I'll click the minus Z axis and change the up value to Y. Now the backlight will stay pointed at the center of the microphone. Next I'll switch back to the Object Data panel so that I can make some changes to the lamp. I'll start off with a lamp size of 7, a strength of 20,000, and a spot shape size of 45 degrees. Now I'll press 0 on the number pad for camera view and switch to rendered view. Then from the outliner, I'll disable the two front lamps. Currently, the backlight is lighting the top of the microphone, but not the sides. I want the rim light to start at the top and continue down the sides until it almost reaches the bottom of the microphone. Typically, I would move the backlight down to achieve this, but this is not going to work because the backlight is not close enough to the microphone. I'll show you what I mean. I'll press G to move, and then press Z to restrict the movement to the Z axis. When I move the backlight down, there is some rim light on the top half of the microphone, but not near the bottom. If I move it down even further, I start to lose the rim light. To fix this, I'll move the backlight closer to the microphone. So I'll switch back to solid view. Then I'll press 7 on the number pad for top view and move the lamp closer. Now I'll press 0 on the number pad for camera view and switch to rendered view. Now I'll move the backlight down on the Z axis by pressing G and then Z. This time I'm able to position it so that I have a rim light that starts at the top and extends almost to the bottom of the microphone. The rim light that I have now is thin. In many cases this may be what you want, but I'm going to make the rim light wider to soften it. I'll do that by increasing the spot shape size to 70 degrees. Now the rim light looks thicker and softer. Now I'll go to the outliner and turn the front lamps back on. The rim light doesn't need to be this bright, and so I'll decrease the strength to 7000.
This looks good. This is what the rendered image looks like now. The rim light looks nice against this backdrop. Here's a comparison of the scene without backlighting and with backlighting. To make the contrast between the rim light and the backdrop even greater, I can make the backdrop black. I'll show you what this looks like. So I'll select the backdrop and change the color to black. Here is the rendered image. As you can see, backlighting can make quite a difference. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.